What down? Fuck no. What are you, why are you just talking? Wait. Why are you such just a hater? <laughs> Keep it in. <laughs> the fuck no should have been in the show, dude. We lost it. Or I guess we can edit it in. Did you see that list that uh, Fort Wayne made? Number 100 out of 100 for the worst places to live for recreation. No, what? <laughs> Dang. For recreation? Yeah. So they listed like the top 100 cities in the country by population and then rank them based on like entertainment, basically. So, like the three categories were entertainment and recreational facilities, costs, quality of parks, and weather. We were 100 out of 100, dead last. It was probably the weather that just made us there. Weather was really low. We were 96 on weather. Why do we keep getting put on all these other lists, though? Like, like you'll see seven places to see in the U.S. Right, or best places to live. It's just because it's cheap as fuck here. <laughs> no, I've seen other ones that are like most fun places to be. Like Fort Wayne's <laughs> list. Not this one. Because I reshared one. I was like, I have nothing but questions for these people. The way they measured this is totally flawed because if you look at the top three... It just invalidates the whole list. What were the top three? So number one is Las Vegas, which is just a tourist trap. Two is Orlando, Florida. Again, yep. outside of Disney, like the entire city shuts down at 10 p.m. Don't forget Universal, though. And then third was Cincinnati. So just random. I don't... What? <laughs> I mean, it was cool. I wouldn't say it's like the third best place to live in terms of entertaining yourself. In oh, those country. were the top three? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily argue Fort Wayne being number 100, but... Top three are pretty suspect. Yeah, damn. I don't know. Hunter's pretty bad. Indy's 88. They're up there a little bit further than us, but... Its nickname is literally Nap Town. Nap City? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got CeeLo Green coming to town. How bad can we be? I don't know. Did you see the pictures from Middle Waves? Those look pretty sad. I didn't even know Middle Waves already happened. Yeah. Who was it again? Big Boy, and then was it Young the Giant? Oh, when you said Big Boy concert, I thought that was like... Outcast. When was it? It was Father's Day and Bonnaroo weekend. Those fucking idiots keep doing the same... (laughs) They did the same weekend's Riot Fest that one year, too. And Johnny Appleseed. You don't go up against Johnny Appleseed in this town. But yeah, I saw a bunch of people shaming people. Like, this is why we can't have nice things. Nobody came to Middle Waves, so nobody wants to come here. I feel like they didn't promote it as heavy this year. It's just this self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, we're a small town, so acts don't want to come. So they book shitty acts, and then nobody goes to it, and it just keeps feeding itself over and over again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a bummer, because the one year I went, I had a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, MGMT wasn't bad. Your best case scenario is you get somebody, like, right before they're going to get big. And we kind of had that. We had Lizzo like Lizzo. the year before she was huge and mm-hmm. nobody cared because nobody knew who she was. So that's yeah. the sad part though. You don't what? get people to hang out all day. They just wait for the headliner and go home. Yeah. Which kind of neglects which the whole, I was that's there the whole purpose Diarrhea for a Planet festival. With three other people. So I know we made fun of Sony for not understanding internet culture, but I genuinely don't know if people like Minions or not. Or if it's just like people ironically going to see the movie. Because <laughs> it's really, it's doing really well. And there's this like gentle minions hashtag trending on TikTok where people dress up in suits and go see the minions movie. Have you seen this? No. Wait, so your question is what? Do people really like minions or is this yeah. just like. <laughs> I worked with this, uh, there's this dude probably in his 50s that had a series of minions t shirts he'd wear to work. I thought it was just like ants who post memes on Facebook. People genuinely like the minions. It's been around for quite a while. A while at this point, hasn't it? It has. Since the dawn of Despicable Me. When was that? 2007, I want to say. So I, kids grew he's up probably with spot it. on. He researched this. It's so something like that. Kids that grew up with it are adults now. That's right. why this is happening. It's come back around from being lame to cool again. Like yeah. Shrek. People post Shrek memes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, Despicable Me is 2010. It's a little newer. I can just never distinguish between, like you said, an ironic thing or just genuine yeah. appreciation for it or something in between. Maybe that maybe that line doesn't even exist anymore. I hated Shrek because I liked it, but <laughs> the animation really turned me off. It Why? was like it looked like a computer game almost. Like it wasn't real enough for you? No, no I don't have a problem with that. I don't know. Just the animation was just different. I don't know how to explain it. I thought it looked pretty good for 2001. I don't think it looked bad. Was that like the first 3D animated movie you'd seen? Had it mostly been 2D up to that point? I didn't or? watch 3D at all. Yeah. So No, I mean like... <laughs> 3D Sh- animation, Shrek not would like be 3D, 3D glasses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shrek would be 3D versus like Hand the, the old stuff. like Snow oh, White Disney yeah. movie would be 2D. Maybe. That might be it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, dude. No, that's I okay. was like, I didn't watch it in 3D. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just looked at me like, I don't watch 3D. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't afford that. It took a hard stance. Have you seen the Giannis movie on Disney Plus? <laughs> no. 
I feel like back in the day, they would have sandwiched that together with Adam Sandler's movie, that hustle, uh-huh. where he finds like a diamond in the rough. Like if they would have made that the same movie, that would be really good. But now that they exist separately, I don't have interest in either of them. Have you watched both? I watched the Adam Sandler one and it was eh. just okay. Yeah. So wait, the Giannis thing, is it a doc? It's not. It's like a PDF. Just a movie. <laughs> Rise is what it's called. It's weird that he's already got a movie out. He hasn't been, what is he like, even 30? Does he get exiled into a pit? People love him, though. Well, yeah, but it's young, it seems like, to be getting like a life story movie. Yeah, I I think that's just how stuff works now. Trying to capitalize on that kind of thing. I'm surprised there's not like a whole LeBron cinematic universe. Oh, wait, there's uh, (laughs) Space Space Jam. Jam. Yeah, Giannis is 27. He's younger than you, Ben. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> when you said rise, all I can think about is like Giannis and like that that pit that Bang grew up in, and he's like trying to get out. Like, Sometimes it's like What's you're a saying? caveman that just unfroze from 2012, and your only <laughs> point of reference <laughs> is the Dark Knight and Green Day. What are they saying? <laughs> rise. Did you watch the boys finale? Yeah. How was it? It was it was really good. Was that I, it? <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. Go for it. Did you watch it? I've... Yeah, it's hard to know how much to say around you. No, go ahead. It's, yeah. All right. I still got to watch Fargo and Daredevil. And... I told you to watch Daredevil like five years ago. <laughs> I know. I'm really happy with how they're taking the story. I heard somebody today say the fight scenes were dumb. First of all, they weren't dumb. Second of all, it's not why I watched the show. But... You say dumb. Yeah. Did they elaborate on that at all or just... <laughs> I think they said bad. Okay. <laughs> not that that's like any more specific. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I don't know. I think where the next season is going to go is going to be very interesting. And there was one scene in particular where, let's say, two guys that were like natural born enemies had to team up for a split second <laughs> and had this like recognition that they had a mutual interest. And that was very cool to Pretty me. Pretty cool. Yeah. You like that too? I did. Overall, I feel like the boys stuck the landing on a really good season of television. Definitely like my favorite thing that I've been watching recently. Won the summer so far. Oh, for 100%. sure. hundred percent. Probably going back even further than that. Maybe best show of the year for me so far. Yeah. Even yeah. though Barry was really good. Did you think that they kind of returned to status quo at the end of the season? Yeah. I wish that they hadn't a little bit. And I don't know if that's a fair expectation to have for shows because I'm a fan of shows like the type of shows that drive a lot of people crazy because they like reinvent themselves every season. Your Westworlds, your Good Places, your uh, uh, Legions. And I don't think it's fair to like have that expectation that you reinvent your formula. But after like three seasons, you got to figure out a way to like keep the stakes real. It's kind of the same type of stuff we were talking about with Stranger Things last time. But stakes doesn't just mean life or death, right? That's not a good way to look at the stuff that we consume. Yeah. And like the emotional stakes of the way that this season of The Boys ended was like very strong. And I think if that hadn't happened and it had been more of just like characters walking away from each other when there's like not a real good reason for these adversaries to just walk away at the end of the season. But like, yeah, the emotion of what was going on made it work. I'm still with it. Looking forward to next season. I'm glad that they didn't kill off some characters that I thought they were going to kill off. I was going to say that. Usually the boys will will kill off a lot of the new people they brought on board, but there's a very not likable, but good character in the show now that I want to see more of. I was worried that they were going to get killed off. Yeah, after Herogasm, you thought maybe like two or three of a seven were just like dead and gone. And that's why I was talking to you last podcast about how I didn't know where the show was going to go because mm-hmm. I felt like the whole seven was just disassembling way too fast Sure. and that I thought maybe the season was going to actually end. But now there's just like this maniac who has like all of them by the balls. It's very interesting. I don't even know if they are still together though. There's only three of them now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what they're going to do. Rebrand as the three or <laughs> ho- hopefully bring some, I, I want to see a new seven. I'd like to see a bunch of like four new dumbasses to fill those roles. I kind of wish A-Train would have not lived. (laughs) I don't mind the side storyline with like Blue Hawk and stuff, but like, Mm -hmm. I don't know how much more important he can be moving on. I thought if he would have died, I would have been fine. They keep toying with like, are we going to redeem A-Train? And I feel like the audience is kind of just like, I don't think you are, dude. Like, Or we don't care if you do or don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't think in the audience eyes, they are going to be able to redeem him. Do you think we've redeemed the deep, though? No. Again, like, fun character to watch, but you do have to remind yourself of the beginning of season one, and, and it's like, yeah, no, this, this, guy, yeah. this guy sucks, and he's continued to be bad. 
So what'd you think of the uh, finale to Stranger Things? I fucking loved it. Loved it? Dude, I thought about what Max said really hard though. Because for a second I was like kind of bummed. Because Max talked about last episode how he was kind of wishing that Vecna and like the Upside Down were just like kind of separate. But now that we know that Vecna like controlled literally everything, it was like kind of cool for me. But I also kind of wish that there was a little more mystery in the Upside Down. Like I wish I didn't know exactly that. It's kind of scarier, like not knowing what's out there yeah. in the darkness. Yeah. To know that it's just a human in there. Have him powers. just be like a character that stumbled upon this place that already existed that yes. has a history to itself instead of yeah. him being the origin point. Yep. Told you better with words than I am. <laughs> That's a very good way to put it. Yeah. Exactly what I meant. Do you feel the same way? Because you came up with that pretty quickly. A little bit, yeah. I was a little hesitant to like embrace the upside down as just like being the big adversary for this show because it's just like a faceless, unknowable enemy. And I was glad to have Vecna kind of give more personality to what they're fighting against and like what they're resisting. But yeah, I don't know. It's a little odd to have it all sourced back to him where I feel like if they coexisted a little bit more, that would make a little more sense to me or like give it a little more depth. But I I mean, they're also, I think, trying to tie it up nicely so that it can all end next season. And that, that way there's not just, you know, the upside down still out there looming for all these kids, even though Vecna dies or whatever. I kind of appreciate that they're willing to just kind of like throw that in there, George yeah. Lucas style, and be like, oh, we've planned this the whole time, you know? Obviously they haven't, you know? Right. But I think that's kind of fun. Well, and they said from the beginning, like their initial intent was for this to be like an anthology series, right? Like the kids yeah. weren't supposed to return for a season two or three. It was supposed to be a completely different story, but- Really? So that's why I'm a little curious to see what they do with a spinoff series, if it's going to be something more like that. That'd be cool. Because they've already announced there's going to be a spinoff series, obviously, because it's so successful, but they've been pretty coy about what exactly the focus is going to be and like it's not going to be anything that we've really seen in the series yet so i'm curious to see do you guys have any theories about what you think a spinoff series could be for stranger things i don't have any you don't think it would just be like following another superpower kid that was kind of my guess because like was that season two where they find the other numbers in like that chicago was, that was the soft attempt at <laughs> yeah a spinoff series is like <laughs> do people like uh what was her name callie or yeah something? we'll just yeah. ignore that ever happened never mind <laughs> seems like still pretty notorious for being like the worst side plot yeah in, i'd say worst season probably things. yeah what about do you um, remember what we're talking about <laughs> no <laughs> Which season was this? Eleven, like, gels black her hair and gets a leather jacket and goes to Chicago, meets a bunch of other psychic kids that are, like, running around a van. Oh, no. I don't remember this at all. <laughs> I'm glad I don't. It sounds yeah. awful. It I'm was glad not, you don't. It was not good. I will say I really didn't think it was cool how you find out the whole time Papa was just basically searching for one. And he really mm. is the monster. He like opened all the shit because he was so terrified. Like, I'm not going to lie. I, I loved the season finale. I loved this whole season. But um, yeah, dude, the fact that Papa is kind of the one that made this all happen. I don't know. It was cool to have that tie in instead of just like another CGI demon from the Upside Down comes. <laughs> yeah. 11 points at him and they all move on to the next season. <laughs> dude, when she brought down that helicopter, though. That yeah, was that was sick. tight. I liked her telling him off, too. And yeah. the scene of him dying at the end and her just kind of being like... Not forgiving him. Whatever, dude. I thought that had a lot more power to it than the Vecna showdown. I don't yeah. know. There's something weird about just like building towards this giant confrontation and it's just two people pointing at each other with like magic powers, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean... You get that in like Harry Potter or Doctor Strange too. At least too. in Harry it's... Potter, they've got the energy <laughs> crackling between the wands, right? <laughs> yeah. That, that looks cool. There's and no the physical Baltimore. representation. Do you so think- what, what was the question? <laughs> I don't know. Was there a question? I don't think there was. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on though. I do. I have a question. <laughs> Here's the question. Was it too long? Were these episodes? Yes. The last one, especially. Nope. I think so. You could have watched the entirety of, I think you should leave quicker than you could watch those two episodes. But would you be complaining if they just like made the episodes shorter with more episodes? You mean like cut them up? Yeah. yeah. Edit it. Yeah. I would. Here's my problem. It drags out, man. Yeah. I loved it. The pacing is off. Yeah. Like scenes that should be five minutes or seven minutes long everything is just a little more drawn out for sure and that's that i think them getting a little too big for their britches and thinking that it's like this big epic that they're <laughs> telling i don't know man that was my only problem with it i liked everything they did you know this is really drawn out but the scene uh, <laughs> where max and lucas are writing to each other and it takes them like uh, 30 seconds to write the word hi <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, dude, fuck this yeah. right oh, now. Okay. Yeah. I was I was gonna ask you what scenes you thought were too long. It was stuff like that. And there was one with Elle and Papa where the it's the part where she's like, No, you're the monster. You can feel her saying that like a mile away. Right. And it's just like, get some of these lines out of here, you know? A lot of the action was really slow. Like you had these big moments and it just took forever. Like I felt Eddie was fighting Hellbats forever. Or Hopper with the sword. Yeah. I mean, that was literally in slow motion. Took forever. Uh, And it was like him doing like two moves with a sword, but... It felt like it was th- three minutes of the show or something. He was on the ground know. with that thing trying to eat his face for like the entirety of Master of Puppets. I was gonna say, yeah, they also <laughs> did. You guys picked... like the Master of Puppets part? Fuck yeah, that, that was part, cool. That was that my was favorite. Sick. Let's say I... they also picked one of the longest popular songs known to man. For someone that doesn't like needle drops, I was yeah. like really worried that it was just gonna be him playing the guitar. Yeah. And then when the drums kicked in, I was like, fuck yeah, <laughs> dude, I love it. They did have the bad journey one in the episode before that. Uh, that someday love will oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, I didn't there was, it was a remix though, wasn't yeah. it? It Yo. was like the scary dubstep version of Journey. I kind of felt like Eddie was a cop out death though. Yeah, like, to kill off the newest member of the group. I, know. I agree with that. And you know, it's I, I'll bet they'll cop out even more and bring him back because he was like a big fan favorite this season. <laughs> yeah, they'll do so, a flashback with him like hanging out with Max and Dustin that summer or something. Like I didn't even consider him when we were talking about who's gonna die. It's like no, that's yeah. that's so easy. But you know what? For as much as I was like bloodthirsty the other week, <laughs> when Max's arm started breaking, I was like, I don't want to see this. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> this this hurts right now. And the ending with her was like very dark the implication that like her consciousness might not be there anymore that was at least my read on it yeah when 11 tries to commune with her and just doesn't find anything like yeah. that was pretty fucking scary so so I your blood lust was satiated yeah, feeling pretty good you guys <laughs> max is back in a coma <laughs> dustin has a limp that's all it took <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys like the chemistry between uh, Dustin and Eddie? Like, oh yeah, I yeah. was very surprised. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I just, I didn't expect it. I guess. I mean, it was just kind of a pivot from Steve, but yeah. I think it worked. He's just the lovable sidekick of anybody. Yeah. Dustin, yeah, just throw true, him. Dude. I don't know who he wouldn't work with. Yeah, <laughs> him screaming "most metal ever" is yeah. like such a, <laughs> that part's great. Super cheesy, but it was great. Are you bummed, Jonathan and uh? <laughs> you bummed Jonathan's alive. <laughs> I'm kind of bummed that like they seriously just fucked around with the love triangle all season and yeah. then nothing changed at John- the end of the yeah. season. Jonathan was like, I didn't take your calls because I cared about you. I'm here now. And like, that's all it took. And then why do her about the letter again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They never resolved any of that. Damn, this dude sucks. <laughs> I will say it was nice to see Jonathan step back into the big brother role. Like, yeah. The scenes between him and Will I thought were, were pretty good. And that was like, yeah, it was like, oh yeah, that's why we liked Jonathan. Because right. in season one, I went back and watched an episode of season one. I was like, man, he's great in this. He's this like emo older brother. He gets a little creepy with taking yeah. pictures of people, but yeah, it's yeah. not great. <laughs> <laughs> So I did a bunch of bitching about Nightmare on Elm Street last episode, but it does honor the spirit of the original way better than like Michael Bay's Platinum Dunes remake did. So I have to give it credit for that. Let's say Inception is up for grabs. Chris Nolan's like, do whatever you want with it. Would you rather see it get like a derivative homage series like Stranger Things, a remake or a legacy sequel? What's a legacy sequel? Like. Top Gun Maverick. Like they bring Ooh, back like Leonardo it. in like 10 years, but it's different director. Yeah. Legacy sequel. Yeah. Force Awakens type thing. No remake. No remake. <laughs> remake is definitely like falling out of favor. You don't get too many of those anymore that are just straight remakes. Unless Good. it's like the series remake. If you stretch it out into a TV show and hide it on a streaming platform, then you can do whatever you want with it. See, it's funny for me. I've got legacy cool fatigue at this point. Yeah. Maybe it's the Star Wars It's thing, the Star Wars Star Wars, Wars has sure. got you down, man. I, I don't need Harrison Ford <laughs> to run anymore, okay? You I don't want to see him run. You're Indiana Jones 5, right? Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not I don't even know if I'm going to watch that. Are they going to deep fake him the whole movie? Like, how is this going to go? <laughs> I don't know. They're going to have to, like... CGI a whip into his hand and yeah I don't yeah I don't know <laughs> you're out on the legacy sequels I think so yeah. personally so what what about your favorite movie it's Star Wars well, is already Star Wars and they already fucked it up <laughs> no, I forgot to say last week when we were talking about Obi Wan it feels like series are like the safe space where you can just hide your content and you won't get the backlash like 
That's the mm. reason they're not making Star Wars movies now, because if people don't like it, you just hide it on a platform. And if people don't like it, they don't watch the whole season. Mm. Like if yeah. Lightyear was on Disney Plus, I don't think we'd have any of the backlash. <laughs> just Damn. people wouldn't have watched it. That's a good point. I guess they, I mean, they've already remade like The Fugitive and Jack Ryan and Jack Reacher and nobody cares because if you care, you watch it. If you don't, you don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any movies where you would like to see like a series made out of it? Yeah. I'm thinking of my favorite movies and I guess I just don't want them touched. Yeah. So I feel bad for Max. (laughs) All his movies have been touched. (laughs) Violated. (laughs) Violated. Violated. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, because other favorite movies for me would be like Batman Forever, which Christopher Nolan ruined, obviously. (laughs) No. Uh, Back to the Future. I'm glad they haven't fucked with Back to the Future. It's great, man. Spielberg seems to have a nice safety net on the stuff he doesn't want touched anymore. (laughs) Oh, yeah. How did he get that, though? Starting his own production company Yeah, he's after Jaws. Man. He's <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. I don't know any movies that I'd want turned into series. I already answered no on Inception. I'd rather see yeah. a legacy sequel. It could be a legacy sequel series. Would you rather that <laughs> or just a movie? Shit. I mean, if Leonardo came back and like the whole cast came back. A series of dream heists. Yeah. I'd be into that. New like heist that. every week. That would be pretty yeah. tight, actually. Yeah. If it got a little more, I don't know, light. I don't think you could get as deep into stuff if it was a week to, to week thing. But yeah. yeah, if you did like a Star Trek Next Generation type thing with <laughs> Inception characters. Right. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking of like weird like sci-fi cop shows, but do them like a police procedural. Like do mm. a RoboCop show or a Men in Black where they're like doing new cases every week. Men in Black is one. That's a missed opportunity. I know they tried to reboot that i didn't end up seeing that no i heard it was really bad yeah <laughs> after ragnarok everyone thought that everyone was just gonna love anything with chris hemsworth and tessa thompson, tessa thompson. In that too. dude tessa thompson <laughs> she's uh in stranger things not stranger things fuck uh westworld right yes yeah oh is she yeah nice. she's awesome has that started up yet westworld's back baby <laughs> But I thought it got bad. But I mean, is it back? back. Is it really (laughs) back? I mean, I think so. (laughs) I'm having fun watching it, dude. Yelling at the TV, crying, laughing. (laughs) Crying in. Damn. I didn't cry. So we're like the halfway point. Do you have like best of the year stuff so far as far as music or movies, shows? Does The Boys? It sounds like The Boys is on both your guys' list. The Boys and Stranger Things. um, Better Call Saul. I think I might go Severance for show. Oh, shit. I know I haven't seen The Boys. Fucking show. Or Better Call Saul, but... That show's awesome, too. Music, there hasn't been a lot of, like, big... Like, I missed the big summer anthem. We haven't got, like, a good summer record. Like, what have we got so far? Angel Olsen, Perfume Genius, and Kendrick Lamar all mm. made, like, really sleepy, introverted music to release in <laughs> summer. It's like, there's mm-hmm. certain songs or music you listen to in summer. You guys heard Glow On yet? Maybe we're just supposed to have, like, a more <laughs> introspective summer, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. That's all anybody wants to put out right now. I mean, Joyce Manor was kind of that, but 19 minutes isn't going to fill your whole summer. You got to have something else. Yeah. Are there any, like, specific, like, summer albums that you put on when it's warm out that, like, put you in a certain mood? I feel like I have a lot more fall albums. Fall yeah. hits me emotionally more than any other season, and I have a lot more, like, music that I attach memories to from that season than any other season. Yeah. What's your fall music? Honestly, every fall, I listen to Color Me and Kindness, Smoke and Mirrors. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one's good. It just does. St. Jude. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But not as much in the summer, yeah. honestly. Summer's always just like mindless, like Enema of the State. That's yeah. a good summer album. Yeah, yeah. I listen to that the other day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Punk. What about you, Max? Yeah, no. I'm with Ben. Like, definitely not really a summer personality type. <laughs> Like, I don't have a lot of, like, go-to summer music because that's typically not... I don't listen to a lot of, like, happy, like, bubbly music. But at times, I've enjoyed listening to... I don't know what he goes by anymore, but for a while, he was going by Big Baby Dram. He had that song Broccoli with Lil Yachty Mm. that everyone liked. Okay, Uh, But, like, he's got a bunch of great music, so that's (laughs) a good summer thing. What's the last piece of, like, physical music or a movie that you bought? My God. I didn't realize how much my entertainment consumption methods have changed until my little stereo that has an iPod jack on it broke and I tried shopping for like a stereo with an iPod jack and they just don't exist anymore. I have way too much on my iPod. I think I'm the only one that still uses an iPod. (laughs) I bought some Studio Ghibli DVDs because you couldn't find that stuff on any streaming services until HBO Max came out. That was like a year after I bought the (laughs) DVD set and I was just like, all right, cool. But I'm going to hold on to them because yeah, 
I don't have a lot of like physical media anymore. It's that in my Star Wars VHS tape. Did you ever get into the vinyl boom? Yeah, one of my buddies has like over 10K in records. Like he has rare Blink albums, like bounce composures, like one out of like 40 presses and shit. See, at least those are like valuable. I have like 200 DVDs that are just plastic yeah. that I'm going to have to move someday. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's just like, I don't really need every season of Seinfeld or like, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I paid way too much for this stuff. And, and nobody's going to buy it from me either. That no, it's, it's so invaluable now. Will DVDs be valuable at some point or? It's going to come back around. No. I, well, that's the thing. We're not going to invent a new type of physical media. Like, this is kind of Blu-ray DVD is the end game as far as that goes. I was going to say, they're trying to push this, like, 4K UHD DVD stuff, but those are, like, really expensive, and I I can't restart over again. I can't do it again. (laughs) So it seems like that stuff will will persist, Yeah, but, like, decline subtly. Yeah. It's it's not like VHS tapes where some of those have become worth, like, hundreds or thousands of dollars because yeah. of the nostalgia factor or, or whatever. No one's <laughs> really ever going to get nostalgic for DVDs because they're always going to be around. It's just weird to think how much that stuff has changed just like in our lifetimes. Like, yeah. You're hard up to even get a laptop with a CD drive anymore. Yeah, yeah. the laptop I bought like five years back arrived and I freaked out because it didn't have a where a place to put my CDs. I didn't right. even think about it, right? Yeah. But it given. ended up being totally fine. That was yeah. the weird thing. <laughs> right, everything's adapted and moved on. It's yeah. just like the relics like me that are trying to watch something on DVD or like play a cassette tape of something they taped off cable in the 90s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you ever do that where you like tape VHS tapes and stuff oh, off TV? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. You'd have like that chunk of the tape where there's like, just all these little second long clips <laughs> right. of old things. You see like a ghost from like three tapings past of yeah. like The Simpsons under tracking bars or something. <laughs> oh damn, it's Goku. You guys think entertainment centers are like going to be a thing in the past too? What and, do you like, mean? Like the big years? bulky? Yeah. Because you had those to store like your DVDs, your They kind of seem like they already are. Like people just do the wall mounts and that's it. Right. But like in 10, 20 years, are people going to be like, what the fuck's an entertainment center? Probably. I think that, that's what I'm saying. I think we're probably already there. We're just not realizing it yet. <laughs> Thinking about how big all that shit used to be. Just like a big fucking cabinet that would open up yeah. with the TV inside. And people would be like, I'm saving up to get myself a nice entertainment center. The right. depth, too. With oh, yeah. our big back projector TVs. <laughs> <Yep>. TVs are <laughs> fat. It's two foot yep. deep. I think Ben texted me when Ray Liotta passed away. He's like, we got to talk about Ray Liotta. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah. Vice City, baby. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's yeah. in Vice City. <laughs> Like, I don't, don't even think of that. That's the biggest yeah. effect he had on me. Oh, he yeah. is Vice City. He's, yeah. yeah. I played that game for more hours than I've watched any movie, <laughs> like, probably listened to any album. Really? Yeah. A lot, dude. For yeah. years. That was your biggest GTA? Mm-hmm. That was, like, before it got cool. too grounded. Like, I like the nice arcadey balance of Vice City and GTA yeah. 3. I liked, I honestly. San Andreas was too. Uh, yeah, when I had to start feeding my guy and like making him call his friends and mm-hmm, stuff. And yeah. <laughs> working out. <laughs> yeah, God, yeah. I don't even like doing that normally. No. Well, and it was the smallest map too. It was like nice to get around the whole, That's the true. whole place. You could cruise around on a moped and like cover all of Vice City. Whereas like San Andreas, it's like, oh, I got to plan for 40 minutes to drive from fucking San Francisco to Vegas or whatever. Yep. <laughs> My memory of Vice City is I would just always end up on like a golf course. Yeah. And I'd be like, what am I doing here? <laughs> A golf course. <laughs> yeah, they had yeah. a golf course. They had a mall. They had a lot of cool places you could go inside in Vice City. There was a mall and there was a shop in there. We could go get a fucking katana. But then, yeah, that mall was wild. What's the code? The GTA code for your weapons. Rosebud. <laughs> no, it says Sims, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I just I, figured you knew it since you were. <laughs> I knew the tank cheat code. You could have a tank drop out of the sky. R1, L1, R2. Yes. <laughs> See, I figured you were just going to spout it off like that. Like it was no, just programmed in there with the I Dark think Knight. It starts with that. No. <laughs> I remember, like, in uh, like when I was playing this, like, fourth, fifth grade, that room was being going around. I'm like, hey, man, you can go to the strip club and press, like, X. You can get the strippers to, like, take their clothes off. People were like, oh, no way. <laughs> Cartoon boobs. And, and it was, was just like a triangle with a nipple. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't even work, actually. The cheat codes didn't work. I'd buy gaming magazines. Yeah. To try to, like, find cheat codes in Vice yeah. City. You know, before the internet was big? Oh, yeah. Those were fun times, man. That's another oh, bygone man. era. I was always looking for cheat codes in games that 
didn't have cheat codes. Yeah. Like that was a <laughs> But would you buy those magazines though to try to find stuff? Yeah. I would buy like the game guides. Like the strategy guides. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I had like a game shark. I bought a game shark at one point. Nice. And I would yeah. just like make these fucking like Shots in the dark based on shit I'd read online. Like, oh, I don't know. Final Fantasy, I guess. I guess you can get some cool sword. But it was never true. Yeah. Same with the strippers in Vice City. Yeah, that game shark was the biggest waste of money. You see any of uh, Rage Against the Machines return? Or Zack De La Roca hurt his leg like the second night out? Oh, no way. Yeah. He did like the whole rest of the set, like just sitting on an amp. Never been into them. I thought about going, but it was just like 200 bucks to get in the building. Oh, damn. It was real expensive. Jeez. And it was, yeah, like the United Center in Chicago. So like you're oh. in a basketball arena. Yep. <laughs> it's not going to be great seats. If you get the nosebleeds there, man, you I saw the Lakers and the Bulls there and we got seats up pretty high. You can't see anything. If you buy tickets for that much, like the Guns N' Roses concert, like when they came back and then Axel hurt his leg and like toured in a wheelchair, like would you kind of just want them to reschedule? Yeah. Like aren't you a little bummed that like the front man isn't going to be mobile during your really expensive concert? concert yep he probably had like a lavalier attached and was like fucking carting himself in wheels and shit <laughs> he had like a throne like dave grohl made himself like a throne that he played with and he broke his legs so i think he sat in that but like oh, dave damn. grohl doing it looked really cool and axel rose just looked like somebody's fat aunt at a dinner table yeah. <laughs> like screeching at people i probably wouldn't pay to see axel rose now yeah. let alone in a wheelchair what's like your top dollar you'd pay to go see a concert experience like minor threat reunion something like top shelf what's the top dollar you'd spend for like a single band concert oh something like if it was like some crazy reunion not like a festival just like these two or three bands are playing if i got to see i'd pay like 200 maybe to see system of a down play yeah i don't know that i'd go much higher than that yeah that's about it (laughs) it'd cap out at like two three and it'd have to be Mm -hmm. really unique circumstances like exactly yeah operation ivy's like we're only gonna do one more show we're done Something like that. Yeah. Even that, 200's a lot for Operation Ivy. Just is watch there... the transplants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same thing. Is it? Is there anybody you'd like go all out for on a big ticket I like that? I don't know, man. Like a lot of them I'm realizing I would have to like time travel for. Because right. I was like, oh, I would love <laughs> if the original Yes got back together. But like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Right. At this point, it's kind of like the legacy sequel thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So I don't know. If I had a time machine, I'd go back and see Yes in their prime. I'd go back and see Nirvana. Oh, that's a good one, too. That's a good call. Or like Jimi Hendrix, maybe. Yeah. It's like there's plenty of good ones that you'll never be able to see no matter what. Nobody (sighs) living is what we're getting down to. (laughs) Right. And I'd pay like top dollar to time travel, like maybe $1,000 to go see Nirvana. I've seen like a lot of my favorite like propaganda. I've seen them like three times, I think. Then I've seen Wilhelm at that show in Ohio. That was really cool. We missed Caveller talk that one yeah. time in Fort Wayne. <laughs> that was too bad. But it was cool seeing Gojira yeah. and uh, Mastodon. Yeah. Was, I mean, even though they were playing that new album, that yeah. was whatever. Well, know. that's the risk. It's like, if you don't hit them right when they have a new album out that you really yeah. connect with, it's like, right. oh, what are they going to play? Yeah. As much as I'm still enjoying Converge, I missed when I wanted to see Converge. You yeah. Know? It's almost like you got to wait for the reunion, like, or not the reunion, when they do those anniversary tours. Like, me and Ben went and saw The Offspring when they played Just Smash. And that was perfect because, yeah, if it, it was, was all sick. the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to wait for that with Dookie with Green Day. We already passed oh. 25 years, didn't we? 30's mm. coming up, though. Well, he always makes these comments where he's like, just make another dookie. Make another dookie. Yeah. And he's like fucking sick of hearing it. So I don't know if he's going to. It's <laughs> you don't almost think like he's going to revisit it. I feel like he thinks he's a better artist now than he used to be. And it just makes me so sad. Like the fans that you have that maybe never got to see you in the past who supported you, like by buying your albums and shit, buying your shirts, and maybe never got to see you play your favorite albums. That's a good way to repay them back. I For think. sure. Like if Green Day were to play dookie, there's a lot of people that fucking go do- watch that. There's a lot of bands like where I'm like, I, I need to see him before it's too late. I never got to see the Beastie Boys. I regret that one. I never got to see Blink-182, but if it's Matt Skiba, I don't know that I want to. Mm -hmm. (laughs) If Tom DeLonge isn't there, that's not really. Yep. Especially in a three-piece. Like, that's a third of your band. He he seems to be someone who thinks he's a better songwriter now than he was then also with all the Angels and Airways stuff. Yeah. Right. The interesting thing with that is, like, when you make a career out of writing this, like, immature music. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) then like how the fuck do you pivot from that especially if like yeah they they don't have someone like him doesn't have the songwriting maturity to come out with something that's really gonna be like oh shit tom delong wrote this you know 
Yeah. It's not the same thing as like Ben Stiller directing Severance. Where no. you're like, Ben Stiller <laughs> did this? Uh-huh. Right. It just doesn't work when it's a bunch of 40 year olds talking about jacking off and like <laughs> high school pranks. Then you're just Louis C.K., aren't you? <laughs> Probably. You either yeah. die Tom DeLong or <laughs> live long live enough long. to be Louis C.K. <laughs> All right. What's your recommendations? What are you watching? What are you listening to? Have I talked about the Ruined podcast? No. Okay. So that's a podcast where one of the hosts describes a horror movie that they watch to the other host that hasn't seen the movie because she's too scared to watch them. (laughs) And it's kind of great for people like me that are sometimes too afraid to watch horror movies and also just like sometimes trying to consume content at such a rapid pace that like I just want to like read the Wikipedia article that describes the movie. This is like a podcast that does that for you. It's great. It's like a Cliff Notes version of a movie. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, but they're great. They're really good. I feel like a dick now. You guys both get scared of horror movies? I'm just desensitized from watching stuff as a kid. Well, scared after them. After, I'm sorry. I think I'm less scared by them now. And the, it's less something that I, like, okay, like something like uh, Antichrist. Yeah. My friend described that movie to me. Yeah. And I was like, I'm never going to watch that. Yeah. That's like, there aren't there aren't too many like that. I watched The Vivitch. Yeah. I watched... <laughs> Midsummer. I watched Hereditary. I I know about all that stuff. Uh, Ryan, what you got? I'm gonna go with uh, another old movie. We we're talking about Ray Liotta, and he's in this movie called Copland, from like 1997, with uh, Stallone, right? Yeah. So uh, James Mangold, who is making Indiana Jones Five right now, mm-hmm. he's got a pretty good track record. He did like 310 to Yuma, Logan, Girl Interrupted, stuff like that. But this was one of his first movies where Stallone plays this like kind of hamstrung cop who's mm-hmm. like a sheriff of this little suburb where all these New York City cops live. And like it's got just an awesome cast. Ray Liotta's in it. Uh, Robert De Niro. It's a dude from Terminator. Uh, Robert Patrick is in yeah. it. Yeah, it's a lot of really good actors all playing off each other. And one of like Leota's lesser seen movies, pretty good 90s drama. I think it's on HBO Max now. So is there a Patriot season three, Ben? I'm working on it. <laughs> Amazon has not responded to my formal request. Did they get Mel Gibson back for this season? They're going to CGI Heath Ledger in. <laughs> yeah. And then John Hamm never got killed by Heath Ledger. Was John, John Hamm was in that? <laughs> no, but the guy at the villain looks so much like him. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> no. I've never seen The Patriot or Patriot. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> uh, yeah, you I've always so avoided much that about it. <laughs> You knew so much about The Patriot last time we talked. Civil War movie with Mel Gibson. That's How do you all? know Heath Ledger died?